College football week one, it is here, and we are here for it. Welcome into the college football kickoff show powered by wagertalk.com. As we've got five upcoming games this weekend, we're going to break down for you, uh, and we've got three of the best doing it as we welcome back in Double R, 1L, Steve Merrill is in the house. Brian Leonard here and TC Teddy Covers in the house, ready to dive into some of these matchups for week one in college football. This is what is known as the A-team, people. This is the A-team. So double R, one L, Steve Merrill, kick us off here, man. We're going to take a look at New Mexico, which we've already had the pleasure or displeasure, depending on how you bet that first game there, uh, of seeing New Mexico and Bronco Mendenhall. But we haven't seen Arizona yet. Interesting matchup uh, here. What do we think we're going to get in this one coming up? Yeah, we had, I mean, we had more than four games last week, but we had four, you know, 1A games, basically. So the college football week zero is in the books. We do have some teams that have a game under belt. Of course, Florida State's the big prominent one that plays Monday night against Boston College. That game's coming up here in a moment as well on the show. And there's always that debate, you know, how much of an edge is it to have a game under your belt uh, versus a team that hasn't played? We know in the NFL preseason, those teams that play the Hall of Fame game normally do have a little bit of an edge in the next preseason game. And those are backups, basically. College football, of course, there's no exhibition season. There's barely any scrimmages outside of your own squad. So I do think New Mexico will show better in this game. And um, the line being 31, you know, there is some maybe some backdoor wiggle room for them to cover. Uh, but I'm going to still rely basically on my projections. And my projections usually favor big favorites here early in the season um, in games one and two, even into games three sometimes. And um, I do have Arizona winning this game by over 34 points based on my database simulation, which simulates 10,000 games, variables, all the different situations, including New Mexico having a game under their belt. So I still think this line's a little cheap here. Um, if you're going to play it, I would prefer to lay it. Um, New Mexico could be one of those teams that we look to play on later in the season. Uh, Bronco Minahal, you mentioned the new coach, you know, former BYU UVA coach. He's obviously an experienced veteran coach that I think could turn this program around. Problem is, I'm not sure he has the pieces in place, especially early in September actually August still. They've played two games here in August, and I think this one will not go well. If you're going to play it, I would lay it with Arizona, which is usually my recommendation with most of these big favorites in week one. All right, if you're going to do it, lay it, and that's the uh, that's the way to look at this one. Brian Leonard in the house, and uh, Brian, Notre Dame and Texas A&M is another one of these games we are all looking forward uh, to seeing here because uh, A&M, it's a new era. No more Jimbo, thank goodness. Uh, and Notre Dame, of course, put up or shut up here. Former coach versus former QB. Who wins this one? Yeah, it's interesting. This line uh, opened near a pick em, and steady money's coming in on Texas A&M, taking it up to three. But Notre Dame's uh, one of those teams that draws in a lot of public uh, money. So um, if, you, if you're looking for uh, Texas A&M, and you don't want to lay three, I think you may be able to get a little bit of a benefit by waiting. You know, the Irish played a relatively weaker schedule last year. as Some of their traditional rivals really had down seasons. Uh, that said, this is still a very talented team. Marcus Freeman's third year at the helm. They have a new offensive coordinator in Mike Denbrock, but the receiving unit is down from previous versions in my eyes as they had four highly talented players transferring out. Uh, taking on this A&M defense right out of the gate, I think it's going to be a struggle for this Irish team. A&M was a much better team than the record showed last year. Uh, there were uh, a different offense with Connor Wegman behind center, and uh, when he was injured, the team just didn't have enough playmakers. He's back this year from his broken foot, which gives this team a big boost. Mike Elko comes in. He's the defensive wizard. Uh, when he was here, his in previous stops, uh, his, his uh, stop units were elite, and he brought that success to Duke as the head coach. And, and now back where he feels home, I expect them to have a really good stop unit this season. It's uh, going to be take some time for this Irish offense to gel, and the line lost two players early in the draft. So I think the Irish, if this game was played later in the season, I may have a different feeling on it because I think the Irish team will get better as the year goes on. But at this stage, early on, the Aggies have big advantages, I believe. The a &M coaching staff knows the new Irish quarterback very well, as he was at Duke last year. I think that gives a big advantage to the 
management and the uh, coaching staff from Texas A&M. Um, and I think that's going to be a big advantage, knowing what the strengths and the weaknesses are. Nobody knows it better than uh, than the coaching staff here at Texas A&M now. So uh, if you can lay two and a half, it's a great bet. Uh, if you can lay three, I still like it. Anything more than that, I think I would wait because I think it comes back down. So A&M is the side I prefer in this game. All right, A&M for Brian Leonard here as uh, the coach to get the better of his former QB. Interesting start to the year uh, for them as we welcome in TC. Teddy covers, and uh, Teddy, love this game uh, for you here because I'm in uh, the U country, as you know, and boy, were they celebrating last week uh, watching uh, Florida State get their, uh, get beat up by Georgia Tech. But now Florida State has a little shot at redemption. Either a good thing or a bad thing, Florida State has a game under their belt taking on BC. <laughs> what is it to you? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing against BC? It's a little bit from column A and a little bit yep. from column B. Uh, <laughs> Joe, there's some positives and negatives to take away from it. And certainly, I mean, let's be real about what just happened in Ireland. The Florida State offense didn't work in that game. You know, um, they had 58 rushing yards in the first drive, and they got 40 more for the rest of the game. They scored a touchdown on the first drive, and then were basically <laughs> a shutdown for extended stretches thereafter. DJ Ugalele. Couldn't do much of anything down the field um, in his Florida State debut. And let's not forget, Boston College gave Florida State everything they could handle last year with, what, 31-29 ballgame. So it's not like the recent history is blowout, blowout, blowout. The recent history is, you know, Florida State won a last-second field goal <laughs> uh, last year. So it's not a scenario where there's been a huge class difference between these two squads. And let's not forget, the mistakes Florida State, the, the the struggles Florida State had last week, it wasn't turnovers, zero turnovers in that game, just one penalty in that contest. All that being said, so all that's kind of making it And Boston College is a shorter flight, <laughs> you know? Uh, Florida yeah. State's coming from, uh, from Ireland. So, you know, there are a lot of points towards, a lot of arrows pointing towards BC in that ballgame. All that being said, for me, it's Florida State or pass in this ballgame. Florida State has the game under their belts. Mike Norvell talking about what he wants to do differently this time. He said, we got to have explosive plays. All right. They were conservative on third down. They went to run the football instead of letting DJ drop back. You know, it was a game where they didn't really get, you know, where they have uh, Jakey Douglas and Malik Benson combined four catches uh, for less than 100 yards between them. And, of course, Akeem Williams may well play this week. He sat out last week's game, and that's a big impact player for FSU against a Boston College secondary that, in my mind, has a bunch of question marks. BC last year was not a good pass rushing team. They weren't a good team at stuffing the opponents at the line of scrimmage, and they certainly have a whole lot of questions in that secondary in this game. With Florida State looking to create big plays in this game, no argument here with the Seminoles minus the points. No argument here with the Seminoles team total over that's the way i would look even though spot wise you know uh you can understand that uh maybe bc is in a little bit better spot than fsu i don't think they're the better team yeah i uh i'm with you i don't uh i, I think florida state is gonna you're gonna see a different version of florida state uh, this week against uh bc but that game of course uh is coming up uh sunday or, or is that game monday, monday. Teddy? It, that game's monday yeah. right okay so we do monday have a night. game coming up sunday uh that we're going to talk about here and we'll go around the horn with these two last games clemson and georgia if you're tuning in to check that out or lsu and usc we're going to cover both of those and i do want to let you know uh, those of you joining us here for the first time on Wager Talk, a shout out uh, to those hitting us up on TikTok right now, as well as those day drinking on Instagram. We always appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us here. But we do have an opportunity for you to buy two, get one free this week. And what a better time for that to happen, right? As college football underway, NFL just around the corner, postseason baseball all three of these guys hop on board. All access means every play, every sport for the next, not two, but three weeks. 
You can partner up with them. Uh, available on their pages over at wagertalk.com. It is a great deal, guys. It's a great way to partner up and build your bankroll early on in the football season. So visit wagertalk.com. Hit up Double R1L, Steve Merrill, Teddy Covers, and Brian Leonard and hop on board today. All right. Let's go to this Clemson-Georgia game coming up on uh, Saturday here because uh, a lot of eyes are on this game. A lot of people think that maybe Dabo, this could be the year for Dabo, especially if we're looking at, uh, let's say, a down year for Florida State. Uh, maybe they can pull it together here. We all know Mario Cristobal is going to figure out a way to blow it for Miami in some way, shape, or form. So maybe it's Clemson. But they got to get past Georgia, uh, and that would be a big step, uh, Merrill, there if they could do this. This line has been coming down from Georgia, 13 and a half earlier. Now we're seeing 11 and a half, 48 and a half as a total. Uh, we did see this a couple of years ago. I think it was a baseball game last time these two played. Uh, Mercedes-Benz, though, sort of neutral uh, in Atlanta here. But how are you approaching uh, this game between these two powerhouses? Yeah, Joe, I think the big news here for Friday is that this line is coming down. And the reason I say that is because I did a standalone video earlier this week on Tuesday. I did my college football top 25 video yesterday on Thursday. And, of course, I highlighted both this game and the LSU-USC game we're about to talk about because I think they are the two biggest matchups of the week. And this line was sitting 13 and a half all week, Georgia. And my database simulation projects over a 17-point win for Georgia. So I do like them in this game. I think there's value and I'd said, you know, yesterday in my top 25 video that at minus 13 or less, 13 and a half or less, there's value because of that key number of 14. So wasn't expected to see a drop down to 12, 11 and a half now in some spots. But once again, the move from 13 and a half to 12 is less than it would have been from just 13 and a half to 14 because 12 is a dead number. So it is dropping, but it's not a monster move just because it's crossing non-key numbers. Be shocked if it ever gets down to that number of 10. Uh, not quite sure what's behind the move here. I do think the public might be on Clemson. I don't do a lot with uh, public data this early in college football. Of course, my NFL fade the public will be next week for week one. Uh, but some of the replies I've gotten back so far in my top 25 video are interesting. A lot of people look like they're liking Clemson in this game. So that gets me liking Georgia a little bit more. As I mentioned, I project a 17-point win. Um, I'm not playing against, which I think is the best team in the country. And you referenced that game three years ago. It was back in the start of the 21 season. You know, Clemson had won the 2018 national title. They'd won two out of what was it, three years. They lost the 19 and 20 bowl games, and then they lost as a favorite in 21. They've really kind of been downhill since. Clemson was about a two and a half to three point favorite in that game three years ago. They lost 10 to three, nothing misleading. They only had 180 total yards. The very next year, Georgia held Oregon to just three points. So this Georgia defense will come to play. I like Georgia, and I like the under as well. So it'll uh, it'll be interesting, Brian. Big, a lot of questions uh, about Dabo and the OC Riley being able to get on the same page. Dabo's very conservative. Uh, many people feel like he's just handcuffed him uh, on the kind of offense that he wants to run with Cade Klubnik. Uh, that's all fine and dandy, but just win the damn game, uh, and nobody will talk about that kind of crap. So what are the chances Clemson could go in and pull the upset here? Like Steve, I also did an individual uh, video on this earlier. And uh, I also like Georgia, and it was 13 and a half at the time. I didn't want to lay the 14. Uh, and it has gone down. I think the reason why it's going down is because there's some controversies out there that uh, Georgia is going to suspend a few other players who were involved in some offseason trouble. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I think maybe the wise guys are trying to get ahead of that a little bit. Uh, correct, Steve's correct. Any t anything before between the uh, 13 and the 10 um, is really dead numbers, but still, it may be one of the reasons why it's happening. My concern with Clemson now, Devil Sweeney is, says he doesn't believe in the portal, he wants to recruit his own players. Um, if that was to work, you would think last year when he did it, his team would have had an advantage over everybody else early in the season, but yet Clemson got off to a bad start and played much better at the end of the season, which is something you would think with a lot of newcomers coming in that that would be what would happen. Uh, but the advantages they had in the first half of the season didn't work out for them. Uh, I read an article saying that out of everything that uh, bringing in new players, bringing in new players that weren't in the program the year before 
doesn't mean nearly as much as it does to recruit your own players. So Dabo may have something in that regard that everybody else doesn't have. If you go back and look, the only other teams, obviously, that don't uh, bring in recruits are the uh, the military schools, and they seem to not have a problem year in and year out. They're, they're always uh, very good football teams considering uh, what they have to play for. Uh, so maybe Clemson will be a little bit better at the beginning of this season than the past. Uh, but it's a situation for myself where I prefer the Georgia side, especially if you're laying less than 13. And Stephen mentioned on the way out that he kind of liked the under. I kind of like the over here. Uh, I don't yeah. think either defense is going to be as good as last year. And I mean, Georgia is usually one of the best, best defenses in football. I believe they're ranked eighth this year. But the Cle- Clemson defense is suffered some attrition. I don't think they're as good. And both quarterbacks, you know, I really like both of them. Georgia may have the best quarterback in college football. Uh, so this game over, I, even though I like Georgia in the game, I think this game over is probably a pretty good bet as well. Liking the over in this one. Teddy, I came across a number I couldn't believe, but I guess it makes sense, right? Georgia, 40-16 and 16 since 2017 against the number when they're laying less than three touchdowns or more. This is usually the kind of price range where Georgia blows the team out and they prove their dominance here. Is it just some same old, same old here for Georgia, or are we expecting something different? So I'm going to make it a trifecta uh, mm-hmm. to looking at the Bulldogs as opposed to the Tigers uh, in this ball game. I mean, we've seen what happens in recent, you know, Clemson had a hell of a run. They had Deshaun Watson and they had Trevor Lawrence. All right. Two truly elite quarterbacks. They had them both for extended stretches and Davos when he took advantage of that. Is Klubnik in that level? Maybe, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> Yep. Clemson stepping up in class, Clemson season openers. Clemson extra time to repair. Let's see. They lost at Chalk last year, 28-7 to in the season opener. That's seven points they scored. They lost to Georgia in the season opener in 2021. We talked about that game earlier. Um, uh, certainly Merrill did. And that game could have been easily much worse. It was 10-3. to Clemson had 23 rushes for two yards. And obviously there was sacks in that mix. But they could not control the line of scrimmage against Georgia in that last meeting. I don't expect that to be different this time around. Eight punts to the Tigers in that ball game. Look at Clemson with extra prep time. Let's see, the Bowl versus Tennessee last year. Oh, they lose by 17. The Bowl versus LSU. Oh, they lose by 17. The Bowl versus Ohio State. Oh, they lose by 21. That's not pro Dabo. That's not pro Clemson. We heard Merrill talk about the Georgia 49-3 winning against Oregon in the season opener in 2022. You know? Georgia, we would expect them to be ready we have that recent history and when it comes to total in this game so i'm looking at the georgia side clemson team total under is the one way i would look at here total wise all right i'm not convinced that clemson's going to control the line of scrimmage against georgia's defense i'm a believer in the bulldogs defense and even with a theoretically elite qb like klubniak for the tigers I still got my concerns about the receiving core. I'm not convinced they're going to march the ball up and down the field. So I like Georgia. I like Clemson team total under. That's my take for this matchup on Saturday. Ooh, kind of like uh, like that. There you go. You got three takes there. One of the big games coming up this weekend. Clemson taking on Georgia. Will Georgia uh, be Georgia and handle their business here? Or is Dabo got something up his sleeve? This season here out of the ACC, we shall find out. We do have, of course, a game I believe a lot of you have been asking about on uh, Instagram as well as TikTok, uh, and I believe Sean Burks and others uh, are dying to know what we think about this game here. LSU taking on USC, and if we're being honest here, uh, anybody heard a I haven't heard squat about USC. All the hype this year uh, leading into this season and nobody talking about Lincoln Riley, nobody talking about Moss, nobody talking about anything except how bad the USC defense was a year ago. Well, I got news for you. So was the LSU defense. They were hot trash as well. So I don't know, Merrill. This seems like the easiest over on the board. Maybe we're overthinking it. Uh, how much faith do you have in the defenses in this game? Uh, or do you 
Do you think uh, there's no hype around USC for good reason? Well, I mean, I'll debunk. Well, first of all, you can make a case for the under by saying the defense is usually ahead of the offenses early on, right? Neither team has played yet. We also have two quarterbacks that have never played a regular season game before. But that's all bunk because they both played the bowl game last year Mm -hmm. for the two previous Heisman Trophy winners, and they were monsters in those games. Uh, Newsmeyer for uh, LSU, by the way, he just signed a deal with Powerade. He's one of like five guys in the country who's going to be promoting Powerade, so they know he's the real deal. They're putting some money behind them. And after sitting in for Daniels in that uh, ReliQuest Bowl last January, he had 395 yards, three touchdowns, and got the MVP of the game in his first start ever. <laughs> uh, Miller Moss was even better for USC. It was incredible. What was it, six touchdowns, I believe, in his bowl game for Kayla Williams, the previous Heisman winner. So these are two of the best quarterbacks in the country. They're in the top 20 in Heisman odds at most books. Um, so there'll be no drop-off, in my opinion. Defenses are more experienced for both teams, but that's not saying much because they were so bad last year. LSU games averaged 74 points. They went 12-1 and one over. USC games averaged 76 points. They went 10-3 and three over, but they were 10-1 and one over their first 11 to start the season. So combined, these two teams, 22-4 and four to the over last year. Mm. This line's gone from 62 up to 64, range 64 and a half. Um, but the over is the only way I would play the total. As far as the side, uh, my database simulation, 10,000 games, has LSU winning by four and a half on average. So I think this point spread is spot on. They do look like probably the better team, but there's still some concern on that defense uh, on the secondary. I think their defensive line, the tackles especially, might be a little weak this year. So, yeah, both offenses should have the edge in this game. It's also on a fast track in Teddy Cover's backyard at Allegiant Stadium, home of the Raiders. Um, So, yeah, I think the over makes sense. And as far as the uh, point spread, I think it looks pretty accurate. So, a uh, little birdie talk, and we'll have to qualify this with Teddy Covers, but uh, if you're watching the TV on uh, on Sunday, you may want to look in there because Teddy Covers might be, and I'm just saying, maybe in attendance. He may be streaking in the quad across the field. We'll have to wait to see there. Brian Leonard, uh, this game here, I, I mean, I guess people forgot that, uh, yeah, if it wasn't for Daniels last year in LSU and putting up a ton of points every game, Ooh, it would have been uh, it would have been interesting that season for him. So defenses weren't great. Nesmeyer is like Merrill said, phenomenal in the bowl game. Uh, Moss was great in the bowl game too. So great offenses, suspect defenses. How do you put this together in this one at a uh, neutral site? Yeah, when you've got uh, two teams that lost tremendous quarterbacks. Uh, you would see, you would want to see or expect to see a letdown, but I think both of these uh, teams are very well set up offensively, and the total uh, I think is a little bit low here at 64 and a half. I'd still prefer the over here. Um, one thing I noticed when I lived in Cleveland, I was there for the first you know 35 years of my life, is when teams from east of the Mississippi go to west of the Mississippi, they really struggle. I remember Big Ten schools that were really good would go out to the West Coast and they never covered. And that was one of my favorite handicapping angles. Well, LSU has that same situation. And although USC isn't playing at home, they are playing in Las Vegas and they're very familiar with this city. They have their basketball, uh, their tournament here in Las Vegas. And so they've got a big advantage here. And you're also getting a USC team who has been, just like LSU, one of the elite programs in college football over the years, where you got them off of a bad year. In fact, not only was it a bad year, they lost five out of their last six games in the regular season before that extra rest and coming into that bowl game. And that gave, that showed me a little bit of heart here for USC. They could have just thrown it in in that bowl game and said, well, our season's over anyway. Who the hell cares? Uh, but no, they came out and they performed very well and got the cover. So I think the USC side is the way to go here. I think both teams are very good teams, very well coached teams. And I think them being in Las Vegas is definitely going to hurt LSU with a traveling standpoint. I prefer USC plus the points in this matchup. Plus the points. And uh, I mean, I saw the study uh, a month ago as high as six, I think, is what we were looking at. So the money is rolling in. Uh, here the total holding strong at 64 and a half. Now, uh, you may or may not make an appearance at this game here on Sunday, from my understanding. But, uh, what do you think you're going to see in attendance? Is this better? LSU fans travel, we know this, but is this 
closer to a home game for USC, or what do you think you're going to get there? So, yeah, I'm supposed to be at the game on Sunday. Assuming that I wake up, I'll be there. Uh, so, yeah, the sharp money's on the yes uh, for that kind of should be a lot of fun. Tony Finn uh, <laughs> coming in that. Uh, that alone should make it uh, uh, one of the more amusing uh, days uh, of the year. Uh, but I want to talk conceptually Ooh. about what I'm looking for when it comes to week one wagers. All right. In college football, it's not about players. Both these teams last year they lost a previous Heisman winner, you know, Jaden Daniels uh, for LSU and, and obviously Caleb Williams uh, for uh, uh, USC and, of course, the top two picks in the draft. All right. It's not about players. It's not about coaches. It's about a team and, more importantly, how the team is priced in the marketplace. All right. People say, oh, this team's really good. That team's really bad. If the market's priced the team correctly, it doesn't matter how good or bad they are. We're looking for mispriced teams, whether it's bad teams that are worse than the markets think, whether it's mediocre teams that are actually pretty good, whether it's teams that are priced like they're elites, but they're only pretty good or mediocre. Tons of opportunities. But week one opinions about how much better or worse teams have gotten. The reality is that 130 plus teams, 110 of them are going to be power rated pretty close to where they were last year, you know. There's probably 10 that are a touchdown or more better, maybe 10 that are a touchdown or more worse. But that's not these two teams. USC is not a touchdown or more worse, better than they were or worse than they were last year, or LSU either. So this game doesn't fall into any of those categories for what we're really looking for for week one. So whatever bet we make for this, whatever opinion we have, it's going to be relatively small. That being said, boy, you read the coaches' quote, coaches quotes for Brian Kelly. And in particular, both of these teams, by the way, with new defensive coordinators this year. On the one side, we have Blake Baker, the highest paid assistant in college. LSU poached him from Missouri this past offseason. Missouri's a defense overachieved last year. And he's working with a lot more talent at LSU than he did in Missouri. Uh, quote, I know we're going in prepared defensively. Our guys are excited to play for Blake. There's not a lot of confusion or bust busted coverage. Guys know what it takes to play LSU football. I'm excited to watch them play. And, of course, Lots of experience for LSU on the defensive side of the football. USC, we know they gave up, what, 34 points a game last year. They went 4-9 against the spread, just 1-5 against the spread away from home. They poached UCLA's defense creator, Danton Lynn, D'Anthony Lynn's son, uh, former Chargers head coach. And he's another guy who we like very much as a DC. So week one... We expect the offenses to take a, have a little bit of growing pains, to be a little bit of sluggish. The statistical profiles for these teams, over, 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 yeah. over, over, yeah. terrible defense. Week one, I'm expecting some defense. I like mm. under here more than either side. And if I'm playing the side, I'm laying with LSU. That's the defense I trust more. And everyone's talking on who do we trust? What week one stuff do we trust? This offense. Week one, I want a defense I can trust. LSU, I know they weren't good last year. I think they're a defense we can trust this year. Give me the Tigers. Give me the under on Sunday here in Vegas. And that is the beautiful thing about the college football kickoff show here on wagertalk.com. For those of you just joining us, different opinions, different angles, same game. Knowledge is power, people. That's what it's all about, making smart sports investing decisions. And maybe the smartest decision you can make today is to head over to wagertalk.com. Visit Double R1L, Steve Merrill. Visit Brian Leonard. Visit Teddy Covers. Take advantage of that buy two, get one free. Two weeks turns into three weeks, uh, and that means all access. So that's an extra free week of football. NFL right around the corner. College football is here, people, and we have got you covered. Take advantage of that opportunity and partner up with these guys. Build that bankroll. It is a long football season uh, and the opportunity for you to build the bankroll early on with these guys happens now. Not to mention the tons of free content we have, including uh, Double R1L Steve Merrill's Top 25 College Football video, which is available on our YouTube page. Uh, for those of you joining us on IG and TikTok, Welcome in. Make sure you guys head over to YouTube. Check it out. Plenty of great free content and videos there. And then, of course, all sorts of great live content all week long here 
on Wager Talk on all the platforms. So big shout out to those of you guys joining us. Drew in the house uh, over looking for locks. I love those guys on a Friday. Everyone wants a lock on a Friday. Uh, we also have uh, plenty of folks there grinding at all times on Instagram. Pleasure to see you there. Bottom line is, welcome back football. Welcome back to College Football Kickoff Show. And we are just getting started. So don't let this stop here. In fact, just click on the video on your screen right now. Get access to all the breakdowns and previews and best bets for all the big games coming up this weekend. It is just a click away. On behalf of these guys, best of luck this weekend and tonight, guys. We'll see you again soon here on the College Football Kickoff Show.